Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Asin Hussain. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences uh, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Thank you for joining today. Today I shall be talking about uh, eyelid retraction um, and really focusing on upper eyelid retraction. So the first thing to mention about eyelid retraction is that it must not be confused with uh, eyelid entropion or ectropion. Uh, that is, those are cases I've discussed uh, previously and uh, that is when you have a lid margin rotation or rotation of the um, uh, meibomian gland orifices. Eyelid retraction denotes a vertical movement of the eyelid resulting usually in scleral show. So I'll be talking to you about uh, first of all etiology and then uh, briefly epidemiology, uh, history, how the patient presents, uh, clinical features, testing and then management. So. Um, the causes of, uh, of eyelid retraction, well, uh, usually this is caused by a vertical shortening of the skin, either through acute inflammatory changes or chronic changes uh, from uh, sun exposure or long-standing inflammation. It can also occur, however, due to contraction of the conjunctiva through inflammation or surgery. Um, usually with the posterior lamella, if that occurs, you get a actual rotation of the lid. Um, and with the anterior lamella, if that happens, you get an ectropion of the eyelid, but they can also be causes of uh, lid retraction. Um, the uh, other causes are uh, changes to the orbital septum, which can occur through surgery or trauma. But the commonest uh, three sort of categories of uh, causes of upper lid retraction are neuromuscular, mechanical and congenital. So I'll just go to congenital first, of course. Uh, there are um, uh, conditions uh, such as congenital eyelid retraction, uh, mentioned in the BHBJO in 1990, which can present with, of course, eyelid retraction. Epiblepharon can be associated with eyelid retraction. Uh, there is a condition called preterm infant transient conjugate downward gaze with upper eyelid retraction, quite a mouthful. I'm hopefully ho hoping that won't come up in your exams. Uh, more common causes are neuromuscular, and the most common, is, common in those are definitely Graves' orbitopathy or thyroid eye disease. And we think the reason that happens is because of multifactorial causes, such as sympathetic effects uh, on Muller's muscle, uh, inflammation of the re retractors, uh, and fibrosis and overaction of the levator and superior rectus muscles as well. Uh, there are other non-thyroid uh, causes of upper eyelid retraction, such as sarcoidosis. Be aware of uh, dorsal midbrain lesions causing eyelid retraction, which is Collier's sign uh, and uh, perinodes uh, phenomenon. You should know about that. Um, and we know that orbicularis weakness in both the upper and lower lip, such as through facial nerve palsy, can cause eyelid retraction. Prominence of the globe. Can result, such as with severe myopia or thalmos, can result in uh, lower lid retraction or even upper lid retraction. Uh, Craniosynostosis, cherubism, Paget's disease can also do the same. We know that uh, prostaglandin analog induced orbitopathy or PAP can result in eyelid retraction, mainly, mainly through fat atrophy. And there's been a recent paper in uh, the Middle Eastern Journal of Ophthalmology where an Iranian group looked at. Uh, uh, lid retraction compared to uh, uh, what we say about uh, what we discussed uh, about uh, eyelid vectors. So there is something called a negative and, and, and positive uh, uh, eyelid vector. And that is uh, described in relation to the globe, the anterior portion of the globe and the eyelid being a positive vector or negative vector. And that's an interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, discussion in ocular plastics. So epidemiology, um, you know, inflammatory causes of skin shortening include atopy and rosacea. Uh, periorbital dermatitis are less likely to cause retraction, uh, but that can occur. Be aware of congenital, congenital skin conditions like scleroderma and ichthyosis, which can be quite difficult to manage. Um, uh, physical or mechanical skin shortages, such as through blepharoplasty surgery, uh, eyelid uh, 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 tumor removal, laser resurfacing, radiation, actinic damage, I mentioned, chemical thermal burns, and trauma. 
Conjunctiva can be affected through trauma, medications, infections, systemic bullous disease, and autoimmune disease. So that's, those are conditions affecting the skin. Middle lamella, again, those, those sort of categories of trauma, medication-induced infections, and autoimmune conditions can all cause middle lamella shortages. How does the patient present? Well, the speed of onset is helpful because uh, acute onset uh, usually resolves with medical management, such as inflammatory causes uh, may resolve with some topical treatment or some steroid creams uh, or involvement of your dermatology colleagues. Um, you may want to ask about, uh, you, you definitely should ask about ATP and a history of eczema or dermatitis. You should ask about any cosmetic surgery, including chemical peels, laser resurfacing, uh, any history of trauma or facial surgery, sun exposure, always very important to ask about, skin neoplasms or surgery for those, any history of congenital lid surgery, any history of contact lens wear, Steven Johnson syndrome, mucous membrane pemphigoid. And with mucous membrane pemphigoid, you know, the patient uh, may have very subtle findings such as uh, ankyloblepharon or symblepharon, but also they may have uh, uh, oral disease. It's worth asking patients about whether they've had oral surgery or oral treatment for conditions, which in fact may be underlying uh, MMP. Uh, in fact, I've had to refer some patients for biopsies through their oral surgeons or dentists to help guide uh, their diagnosis. And of course, history of thyroid eye disease, uh, if it's active or in its uh, sort of burnt out stages, if they're using topical medications such as prostaglandin analog drops. So what do you see clinically? Well, uh, here's some examples. The top picture is a patient with upper lid retraction on the right side. Um, so there you can see some scleral show. There's some, in this lady, she had actual corneal changes because of exposure and she needed surgical intervention fairly quickly. Um, the skin itself may show stigmata of uh, rosacea. Uh, you may see my bone gland dysfunction, blepharitis, eyelid margin keratinization. You may see actual scars on the eyelids from surgery. Um, look for uh, symblephora, like I said to you. Look for blunting of the fornices and signs of trachoma, such as superior tarsal involvement and arts, arts line which um, I'll let you look up. Look for other signs of stigmata or signs of thyroid eye disease. In this lady, she had proptosis. She had uh, evidence of uh, inflammation over the extraocular muscles. Um, look for obviously corneal signs, uh, leg ophthalmos and lid, lid, lid malposition in terms of coexistent uh, rotation of the lid margin. So the lower patient, he has a slight lower lid ectropion, but really he's here for surgery for his lower eyelid retraction which is in his case is due to mid-face descent and also a prominence of his uh, globe somewhat, giving him a, uh, a positive vector there. Uh, sorry, giving him a negative vector whereby you can see uh, inferior scleral show on both sides. Uh, so in terms of testing, you know, put your patients through um, serology testing if you are thinking about thyroid eye disease. You may want to biopsy the conjunctiva or skin if you feel that there is uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a problem with that. Um, you uh, then want to do testing for, like I mentioned with in my earlier case about uh, uh, lid malposition, uh, do a forced traction test. Is there re resistance to pulling the lid away from the eyelid, from the globe? That might indicate scarring. Is there, uh, as this patient on the lower picture shows you, his lid re retraction actually worsens on upgaze. And that seems to indicate that he also has an anterior lamellar deficiency, which should be corrected at the time of surgery. These patients sometimes also have a volume deficiency, uh, needing um, either uh, 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 placement of uh, a graft or uh, a transfers of fat sometimes uh, to, to improve their uh, mid-face. You can do a snapback, you can do a lower lid distraction test. So risk factors in these patients, well, um, actinic sun damage is definitely a risk factor, atopy, history of atopy, rosacea, uh, periorbital dermatitis, and uh, be aware, of course, patients who are in areas endemic for trachoma, uh, uh, that is a, a, a significant risk factor for developing lid retraction. 
Differential diagnosis, um, always think about all the deficiencies of the lamella that can occur, the anterior, middle, posterior. Think about other causes such as Graves' disease, uh, uh, orbital inflammation, dorsal midbrain lesions, mechanical effects of the globe, and congenital causes. In terms of management, um, you know, that will of course be determined by the underlying cause. So if, the, if it is A to B or rosacea, uh, you may want to use systemic treatment or topical treatment of some sort. Um, uh, even oral treatment with doxycycline can be used for rosacea, of course, and secondary um, anterior lamellar deficiency. <clears throat> Ichthyosis, uh, tazarotene cream is, can be useful. But in terms of surgery for ichthyosis, patients usually need to have uh, uh, repeated skin grafts, but eventually you can think about uh, spacers such as uh, uh, fillers, which can be injected and, and, and improve the lip position. And th that has been described in, in multiple papers. In these patients, you want to treat any signs of oct active conjunctival inflammation uh, with topical treatment. Um, with Graves' upper eyelid retraction, such as lady in the upper picture, you can consider injection of triamcinolone tri sub subconjunctivally, and that has been used. You can con consider onabotulinum toxin, but be aware that you may actually give the patient a ptosis. And some, patients, pa some people have benefited from um, hyalur hyaluronic acid fillers, as I mentioned, uh, for improving upper and lower lid retraction. When it comes to surgery, it's really determinant on the cause, but of course, whether you're dealing with the upper versus the lower lid, how bad the retraction is, how long it has been since uh, the problem started, whether they've had previous surgery, and what the patient wants, whether they want to have, whether they're happy to have more invasive surgery. Um, there are many variables involved. I would say this is quite a specialized area and something which you don't need to be too concerned about, but just be aware that really your management is determinant on if there's a deficiency of a lamella uh, or whether there is an inflammatory cause uh, involved which needs to be corrected. So really, first of all, assess if it's the anterior or posterior lamella. If it's the posterior lamella, you may well need a spacer graft such as hard palate, hard palate graft uh, or a mucous membrane graft from the mouth, for example. If it's the upper eyelid, if it's severe uh, upper lid retraction caused by anterior lamella deficiency, you may need to do a skin graft. If it's a, a, a mild form, consider fillers, uh, or you can do procedures such as a mullerectomy, for, which I did for this lady in the upper picture. She did very well from that, or levator uh, uh, a surgery with a graded blepharotomy, which can do, patients can do very well with. For, the, for patients with lower lid entro, uh, sorry, lower lid, uh, I beg your pardon, lower eyelid retraction, Again, skin grafting may be necessary. You may want to uh, give spacer grafting, if uh, particularly if the posterior uh, lamella is involved. Mid-face lifting has been described in multiple papers in OPRS, and again, a very specialized topic. And I think that's enough for the surgery. Now, I should just mention that there are some complications involved with any type of treatment, of course. Be aware that if you're using topical steroids to the, to the skin, uh, you have to be monitoring them for raised IOP and developing of cataracts. You should counsel your patients about that. If you're gonna put a patient on tetracycline products, be aware of tooth discoloration in the unborn fetus, photosensitivity and, and GI upsets. Um, patients with MMP, mucous membrane pump amphigoids, you should co-manage with your rheumatologist or oncologist and these patients usually do very well, but particularly with lower lid retraction, you may have to counsel them that they may need more than one procedure to give them the result that they're looking for. Um, and of course, the indication for surgery is usually keratopathy, which I'm sure you're well aware of, but cosmetic concerns can be, uh, can be a fair argument for, uh, for surgery as well. Okay, that's the end of that case.